Hi guys, welcome to Learning Electronics Repair and welcome again to my friend Detlef. Hey nerds. Hey nerds. How are you doing? Mickey, I don't know how you did now. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see we have the PCB way multi-load here. If you've been following the little saga of this we've yep. been designing. This yeah. is part 24 or something? Uh, something like yep. that. But what I will do <laughs> on this video, I'll kind of get them all linked together in the video description. So you've actually got a list of all of them if you are interested in following and playing along with what we've been doing so far. So in the last video we made, I actually modified this by adding these resistors and basically made a nice video called how to use transistors in parallel without blowing them up. And it's been very popular, so thanks you guys for watching that one. And this load actually now works, so we can attach to a USB, we can attach power onto the banana sockets, and we have a load which will give us quite a decent load. I mean, the original one was 35 watts. This expanded version should be about 140 watts. Mm -hmm. So we've got a nice usable load. But we originally said, if you've been watching this, that we wanted to add a door to board to this. And if we just zoom in down here. There's the mystery header. There's the mystery header. So current sense, VCC and ground. So this is where the door to board is going to fit on. And the idea of the door to board is that we can use this also to monitor the voltage of the power supply we're loading, the current that's being drawn from it, and the wattage dissipated. So that really brings us to where we are today. Yep. I'll just add, by the way, that the original PCB doesn't really need modifying to add the emitter resistors. This is one of the original PCBs, as you can see. Very nicely made in red, of course. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Being the colour of this channel, I know Death has a preference for black, but there we go. <laughs> it was my original suggestion this time. I'm, I'm sure black will win out another time. And I think it was one of you guys, Dutch, who says we should make them yellow. <laughs> of course he did. <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's a story about this, I'm going to add actually. There was a program used to be on the TV in the 80s uh, about a load of builders who were working in Germany. And it was called Auf Wiedersehen Pet. These were like Geordies. Oh my God. Yeah. And they basically, a group of builders working on a building site and they wanted to repaint or redecorate the canteen. Mm -hmm. And they ended up doing it yellow. But it turned out nobody actually wanted it yellow. What it was, you all had the first choice and the second choice. And they all put different colours for the first choice, but everybody put yellow as the second choice. Oh, OK. <laughs> that's, that's, that's how democracy fails. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. So no, who wants the yellow? Well, nobody. Yeah, it's a tiramisu problem, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, that's it. So, as you can see, we have the connectors here, which go to the power transistors. That's these wires. I've put the emitter resistors down here, but they could just be easily attached from here as well. But this way you cool the, the resistors automatically, right? Exactly, yeah, exactly. So I think personally we don't need to change the PCB. We don't mm -hmm. need space on here for large, high-powered resistors. We just sit them next to the transistors like so. Yeah. This is normally, normally I have two or three versions of a PCB. This is not uh, the normal way. Uh, I, I'd, I'd guess that we would need at least two versions, but this is good. Okay, yeah. So for now, they're going to stay there. But what we're going to talk about today is the little daughter board. Indeed. The idea of the daughter board then was to do away with the need for something like this. So previously, I was plugging this into the front of the load and connecting the power supply to be loaded. But although this would display the information we want, it's another expense. So we decided we could actually add this functionality to this very cheaply. Now, we had a bit of a head-banging session, <laughs> and we, well, we had a beer or two as well, actually. Well, <laughs> and that helped. Maybe that helped. Yeah, that helped. <laughs> so the main thing was to add a daughter board that would read out volts, would read out the current and amps, and would read out watts. Mm -hmm. That's all we really want to know from a load. But there were some practicalities involved with this. And the main ones were the fact that this load is designed to work on any input voltage up to mm -hmm. 30 volts. Minimum, we think, is 5 volts. Maximum is 30 volts. We can't go above that because the op-amp won't go more than 32. And most 
bench power supplies don't supply more than 30 volts yeah anyways. 30 volts i'd say is enough to be quite honest i can't think of any real cases that i would ever need to own mm. a power supply higher than that but of course on the door to board is going to be a little processor and display and that is not going to like a range of input voltage from nope. 5 to 30, don't you? No, sir, no way. That is not going to work like that. So that was the first thing we need to consider. We need to fix voltage supply on the daughter board. The second one, the daughter board is monitoring two things. The input voltage, yeah, and the current, which is the voltage across this resistor. Now, if the processor on the daughter board, what's going to be one you like, that? 3, 3.3? Yeah, it's... We, uh, when we were, we were talking about the um, voltage regulator for the daughter board, we decided to go for 3.3 because this is below 5 volts. So if you have a normal USB, a normal USB supply, you go for 5 volts and our regulator will go down to 3.3. Yeah, so, so it's has some head uh, Everything electronic on the daughter will be 3.3. Uh, 3.3, yeah. So it has some headroom. So even mm -hmm. on a 5 volt supply, we can get a nice mm -hmm. steady 3.3. But of course, we need to monitor the input voltage. And if that input voltage is more than processor supply voltage, magic smoke. magic smoke, it's not going to like it, yeah? No, no. It's not going to like it. No, no, no. So we had that consideration. We decided the easiest way to get around that was just to use a simple resistor divider. So if we make a resistor divider with a ratio of 9 to 1, if we put 30 volts in, we will get 3 volts out into yeah. the into the process of ADC, yeah. and that's within tolerance, yeah. Yeah, that's in that's in tolerance. So you always can go for the maximum supply voltage, but then we were clever and thought, okay, we can do better for that like that because if we go for three volts, you have oh, oh three volts left in the resolution of the ADC. Yeah, and we thought, okay, we can go down to one one volt. And if mm -hmm. we go down to one volt, uh, we have the full resolution. The ADC have the, has a setting that we can go for 1.1 volt, and this is what we're going to use for the ADC here. So we were going for a very strange combination. I don't have. Much. Oh yes, okay, yeah. I remember. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, so originally we were going to go with a mm -hmm. nine to one ratio, yep. and we ended up with a it was about 20, 20, 29 to one. 29 to 1. 29 yeah. to 1 ratio. <laughs> so what Dad's yeah. saying is that yeah. with a 29 to 1 ratio, at the maximum input voltage of 30, we get 1 volt into mm. the ADC. Yeah. And the reference on the ADC is 1.02. No, nah, it's 1.1. 1.1. So, yeah. yeah, so we can use the full resolution of the mm. ADC. Yeah. yeah, so that's what we did in the end, guys. So we, yeah. we'll show you a little bit some rather strange resistor values. Oh, yeah. And, <laughs> and we have used, which death worked them out. And, uh, yeah, so that was one problem. So that means we don't get now too much voltage from the monitoring to mm. blow up our little chip, yeah? Mm. The next question I asked was, how high will the voltage be from the current resistor? From the current sense, yeah. yeah. So this is a 0.05 ohm, and uh, we did a little bit of calculation. I worked out to get one volt across this, you need 66 amps flowing through it, and uh, 66 amps is not going to flow through that. Not for very long. No, no, no. no. <laughs> if there's 66 amps flowing there, you have a different problem. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, we did consider that if this resistor went open circuit, then the full voltage would appear across the ADC and it would kill the process. But like we said, if that happens, we've probably got much worse things to worry about than that. Yeah, this will be loud and it will be smelly. <laughs> exactly. Really smelly. <laughs> <laughs> and probably quite spectacular, but... Uh, yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> but we'll try not to do yeah. it on this video. Though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's really the main consideration. Though the last consideration was how much power does the daughter board mm -hmm. draw? Because in the kind of like worst case scenario, we have 30 volts coming in, we have 3.3 volts going to the processor. So that that linear LDO regulator is dropping 26.7 mm -hmm. volts. Yeah. So we toasty. need, yeah, toasty. So we figured that uh, around about 10 milliamps was a nice maximum current to draw on the daughter board. That gave us something like about 270 milliwatts yeah, yeah. On, on the full voltage input. And the LDO we're using can handle 600 yeah. milliwatts dissipation. So, yeah. yeah, this is uh, directly for design considerations. Uh, we were going to use a little, will we use a little PCB and probably one side will be the voltage regulator and a huge copper fill in there just to dissipate heat. Yeah, yeah. 
So those were the design considerations. We, I say, went through them. Then we had a beer and then thought again and we came up with the 29 to 1, a few other useful things. <laughs> so I guess you guys are interested to see the results of our yeah uh, let's show you guys yeah, some, so, some stuff here, yeah right? we'll show you what yeah, we if, if we watched the um electronics channel yesterday on on last sunday i can't say yesterday that uh -huh. uh, if you watched it uh, you maybe caught a glimpse of the little display with with, uh, with us and the little cpu i had laying around and uh, this has mutated ah, already of course <laughs> as things always do of course, we're going to need a little CPU for the whole project. And I thought, okay, man, Mr. Bleep was work, worked with an AT Tiny. So I'm a fan of these UPDI things. If you watch my channel, you maybe have seen a video about UPDI and uh, how easy it is to program with these. So I thought, okay, come on, use, lose a little, use a little CPU over here. This is an AT Tiny for 12. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, uh, when I tried to compile it for the OLED display, I tried to compile some basic codes just to test out if this works. Yeah, the compiler was laughing at me and it was really loud laughing at me because I tried to uh, compile a program with 8K into this little 4K CPU. So, so what made the program so big? Because it's just monitoring voltage and current like yeah. Mr. Bleep does. Yeah, this is a complex thing to uh, control the OLED thing. Oh. So you have lots of lots of lots of working parts in there and uh, the, uh, the, uh, the thing with this char char set in there. So the char set. Oh, only character set is really cool. Character set, yeah. yeah, yeah. Which just, which, which it's just numbers and some dots in there. Yeah. It's uh, about eight kilobytes. So uh, yeah, yeah, no chance to do this in a 4K CPU. So no, we need to think bigger. Okay, so basically because of the amount of data we need to store the alphabet in numbers, hmm? nothing really to do with the code. Yep. Oh, okay, so we get rid of that then. We get rid of it and we show you a working thing. This. This is a working thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a work of progress. It's a proof of concept, I call yeah. this. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. And you already can, can tell there's a little CPU. This is an AT tiny, tiny VR, so UPDI programming again. And this is a 1614. And the 16 in the name of the chip tells you this is 16K of, of, of flash memory. Oh, and okay. I'm already at 90% when I'm doing this, what the little CPU does right down there. So we need the 16K. 16K is close if you want to yeah, do an OLED okay. over that. And yeah. you see the little OLED display. This is a module. This is a pre-made pre, pre -made module. You simply drop in um, VCC and GND and you can, uh, can tell SCL, SDA. If you know your interfaces, you know this is I squared uh, C. Mm -hmm. And now the power bank has gone off. Oh, that's of the power. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're drawing all this current that the yeah. power bank always goes out. Yeah. In actual fact, because the LDO, the voltage regulator, we're trying to limit the current to limit the wattage dissipated. Debt, you said you actually slowed the processor down mm -hmm. on this? Yeah. The CPU is right, running right now at one megahertz. And if it stops now, if it stops again, you can see the little display gets drawn from the bottom to the top uh, because it's so slow. This little CPU really takes its time. Yeah. Uh, if you want to have this faster, see, faster display here, this is easy. Just, um, oh, yeah, that's gone. That's yeah, yeah, that's sure. yeah. uh, if you want to have a faster display here, watch how this draws. Uh, yeah, oh, yes, you do. Yeah, you saw I, this, I right? pressed the button more than once yeah. then. Oh, OK, you can switch. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. by reducing the clock speed on the processor, we gained about four milliamps, mm -hmm. which might not sound like a lot, but it, it is. Yeah. I mean, we, we were originally running at about 12 milliamps, it's now about eight. Yeah. And that makes more difference than you might think to the wattage calculations. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It does. Yeah. And uh, we have now, we checked with the, we disconnected the OLED and the power consumption went down to yeah. two mils or something. So the CPU just takes two mils. Right. So this is yeah. what's generally drawing the power. Yeah. So I actually have this attached at the moment to my bench power supply. I'm not going to adjust the potentiometer. This is simulating the voltage divider network. Mm -hmm. So effectively coming in across there is my bench power supply and the middle one is going to here. And we actually have it set at the moment to a, is a 10 to one ratio. Mm -hmm. So this figure, which is saying 529 now, this will be the volts and basically say, like we have here, 8.1 amps, 9.1 amps. This would say 5.3 V. Mm -hmm. Indeed, yeah. yeah. What you're currently seeing there is a raw reading from the ADC. It's a 10-bit ADC, so this can go up to 1023. 
and it's currently right in the middle. And we probably want to get the shot of the voltmeter in. Yes, we'll put the voltmeter in right now. Okay, guys, so you can see on the left hand side of the screen the bench power supply set to 5.5 volts. The meter is actually reading the output from the potentiometer. It's very difficult to set it exactly, but 5.5 in is giving me 0.569 out, so roughly 10%. Uh, yeah, and that's reading 520. 1, 5, 28, so you can see it's reading as you would expect it to do and I can now take my power supply and put up to say 10 volts and you can see the reading on the meter rising so with the power supply now on 10 volts, 10.4, this is reading about 10 once we put the decimal point in, of course, mm. and you can see on the meter, 1.06. So that's using this 9 to 1 ratio. 29 to 1. It will be. Well, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, I know. It is. will be that right now. Yeah. So yeah. on the final version, if I set my power supply to 30 volts, you would actually get 1. Mm. That's the whole point of it. Yeah. yeah. So you can see that actually works quite nicely. We'll switch this bank on. Sorry about this, guys. The power bank keeps going to sleep. Very sleepy power bank. Yeah, yeah. And I hope you uh, would agree that's basically what we wanted to do. Yeah, that's... Uh, yeah. We're not trying to recreate a multimeter here. This is not our, our thing here. Uh, we just want to have a, a little display to show us these. So they won't be fiddling around with details here. We're going to use 1% resistors and it's good enough for us it's good enough yeah because i mean at the end of the day this is a load so and the resolution of the display is 100 milliamps mm. but i don't think if you're loading a power supply you're too fussed about you know loading the power supply to within like a milliamp or two yeah indeed yeah. you know you just want to know if it'll handle the load at its rated yeah. value yeah Ball or part. close to it Ball ballpark yeah okay so you've seen the little prototype version working now let's have a look at the pcb so, Det designed the PCB, and I'll pass you over to Det so we can explain how this complicated circuit works. Ha. Okay, we don't have so much on this daughter board anyways. What we're going to do here, you remember the multi-load thing was a thing where we said, okay, everything through hole, easy to build. This way we go on a different route here because the CPU is available only as an SMD, so we will we'll be do and it will do anything SMD. Uh, so mm -hmm. sorry for people who will think, okay, I can't solder this. And well, I, I'm the one normally saying I can't solder yeah. this, and then Richard comes along and simply does this. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, we have a cunning plan with this because we're uploading this as a shared project mm -hmm. to PCB once it's finished, and you'll actually be able to just click and order the assembled PCB. Yeah, we're going to do assembled PCBs here. Uh, we'll keep the OLED module over here. We'll keep this as a module. These modules are not that complicated. There are some cap caps, some resistors on there, but there's a flex cable on this. And mm -hmm. this is horrible to solder for me. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so we'll keep with this. And in fact, they are cheaper if you buy the module. Mm -hmm. you buy the module is cheaper than uh, getting the uh, little display and getting all the components. All right. The rest, well, we have an 80 tiny 1614. This is the CPU down here. I, I didn't draw this very nice. Just follow me here. Mm -hmm. And. Um, it doesn't need so much. Uh, we have SCL, SDA, and if you're wondering why I choose these pins, if you get the look at the documentation on GitHub, uh, the good documentation for the AT Tiny Core, uh, you find that uh, these are the defined pins for SCL, SDA, so I squared C communication. Uh -huh. So these must be on these pins. You can shift them, but mm -hmm. normally you do you, you know, use them there. And um, then I only need two inputs name, uh, by name volts and current sense. Yeah. Follow me with the current sense. The current sense comes comes directly from the header and by that directly from the motherboard, from the multi-load board. This is for the, for the 50 milliohm yeah. current sensing resistor. Yeah. So even if it says current sense, this is a voltage, an analog, yes. analog voltage. Uh, so uh, we drop this directly into the CPU. Again, uh, normally this voltage should never go above 3.3 .3 volts. No. If it does, you have a different problem. Correct. Believe me, the the, uh, the little CPU baking here isn't isn't your main problem. No, anyway. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. Um, 
Then we have voltage in over here, and voltage in has some paths to, to go. For once, it goes down this resistive divider over here, and these are some really crooked numbers, 180k to 6.2k. This comes out to 29 to 1. Yes. Yeah, so uh, if we get 30 volts on the inputs, we get 1 volt on the outputs. Yeah. In a reasonable pre precision. We we'll haven't wrote this. We, we did, we're not at the point where we have a working thing here. So when we have the working thing here, we will fine tune the numbers on the in software then. Okay. Because it's in software. And we're using 1% resistors. So mm -hmm. I suppose given the fact one resistor could be 1% out in one direction mm -hmm. and 1% one, 1 in the other direction, Technically speaking, we have like a 2% precision. Mm, yeah. But guys, this is a load. It's not a precision instrument. Yeah, this is not a multimeter. Keep in mind. Yeah. All right. The trickiest part for us was really the, to get a voltage regulator that can handle 30 volts. Yeah. Uh, this is not so easy. All these AMS 1117, they up to 18, 18 volts. 18 volts, yeah. yeah. And yeah. the 78 MO. Five was 24 volts. Yeah, 20, 20 some. 20 higher. something, yeah. Yeah, but we wanted to go the full full range for the 30 volts. And this is what came up, AP7380. Yeah. Never heard of it before. And this is a really tiny SO, what was it, 25? Uh, SO25, a very small surface mouse. Yeah. And they make these regulated a whole range of output voltages. Mm -hmm. So on this, this is the 33W5. That's actually the 3.3 volt version. Indeed, yeah. Uh, but these were really nice. Weren't they? they were a couple hundred, 200 milliamps, mm -hmm. yep. uh, 600 milliwatt. Yep. And it's an LDO, so yeah. low component count. With the current we're drawing, even with the OLED, there's no need to do a switch mode regulator. No. This would, you need a diode, would need a coil, and uh, this way we're coming around with two, two caps and we're done. In fact, to be honest, using this like a DC to DC switch mode on such a low load of 10 million, oh, may even have trouble yeah. regulating properly. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, th this works, guys. We're sure this works. Mm -hmm. A very simple device, very low component count, just that and two capacitors. And this one actually could handle 33 volts maximum input. Mm -hmm. Yep. This so is it's fine. Neat. Well, uh, the last thing on this uh, very complicated schematics is the programming header over here. And this this is my standard UPDI programming header, UPDI Universal Programming and Debugging Interface. It's an Atmel protocol, and this is used to do the programming of the little CPU over here. The trick is here, we can do this in circuit. This is yep. a SMD component, so we'll have to do this in circuit. Yeah. This is very finicky if you want to program this first and get it in there. And this way we can develop on this board. Mm -hmm. We have simply a three pin header and we'll connect three, four, well, three UPDI and ground and flush the CPU with something new. If, if we want to change parameters, this is easy done by, by this thing here. Yeah, good. Uh, and this will normally be not be populated because we simply have three holes in there and we simply put in Dupont, yep. Dupont cables and be done. <laughs> yeah, for programming this, this is totally fine. Oh, good, good. So this is the whole, the whole magic here. Simple. We, yeah, we don't do that much yeah, more. Simple. So we just realized we need a PCB to order some some PCBs, right? Yeah, we need okay. a Gerber file. We need a Gerber file, okay. and uh, I have to draw a PCB first. He says. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go uh, for it, Dad. Yeah, you guys. Uh, if you want to watch, if you want to skip this, please do. I'll, uh, I normally don't talk a lot when I do this, but um, no. we have to. We, we have to find some some Wait. things to chat to chat about. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. So uh, in this not named um, PCB thing over here, I go over here, and then I have my. I don't need a outline right now because I'm not sure how big this thing will going to be. Okay. So I'll get rid of the. PCB outline here. Why don't this work? Thank no, you. Now it does. And uh, what I want to do with this, I want to have my PCB exactly the same size as the OLED. So this defines my the, the size of my uh, PCB. Well, I will have a little thing over here because I need something to do the header thing. Okay. Uh, let, let, let me do the header first. Uh, I'll change some parameters over here because I hate doing that. So I want to have my values displayed and not my names. Okay. I know people are screaming at the at the, at the third. You can't rem remove the the number the name of the component. I can. Look, watch me. <laughs> 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 and I hate this. If you can, you will. Yeah. And I hate this. I want to have a clean font over here. So same with those. 
No. I'm These are one microphone? I'm yes, yeah, they yeah. are. I suppose being such a small PCB, we don't really need component numbers. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I, you know, um, this takes space, and we probably will run in a point where we said, okay, we were saying, ah, <laughs> uh, how should I do this anyways? So, um, okay, these don't need names. No, we'll probably do when we when we uh, we probably draw the uh, the pin names here. Mm -hmm. And but I, this I, is our little. Uh, uh, this is a voltage regulator. Voltage regulator. So you see, it's tiny. It's really tiny. Yeah. Uh, now I want to get rid of this horrible long description. We don't need this. Okay. And uh, go no and yes. And I need a smaller font for this. This, mm -hmm. this is bigger than the voltage regulator yeah. itself. <laughs> it is. Yeah. It so is. Do a little font. A tiny font here. This is my little processor. Should you do this all all, all the same? Well, um, this is a philosophical discussion. Uh huh. Um, you you maybe have seen PCBs where where is, where there's no description at all, and um, I can totally relate to this because yep. it takes space, and um, all it doesn't need to have things over here. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me find out which is my programming header and which is the. This is why um, I just wonder if you should delete them. <laughs> the, the yeah, discussion. but I simply can check uh, the voltage and ground and current sets. Yeah, this is my uh, adapter to the okay. to the main board, and I have one here, so okay. I can. Take a peek, and I want to have this. Uh, you see, it's to the left, so uh -huh. I'm, I'm already right. And I think we, I, I think I want to go this way. Yeah. And we're going to mount this uh, thing sideways, effectively. Yeah, yeah. So if we have to see a little PCB, there's a header, and I want to have it over here. Yeah. Uh, this would probably collide with one of these um, things over here, but I want to have this outside the OLED display. Yeah. And then it will be somewhere over here. We okay. can do a little PCB that has a nose over here somewhere. Okay. There you can, yeah. can see what I'm pointing at the monitor right now. Uh, so um, I, I know what that means. So it means we can have a PCB with like a, a little sticky out bit. Hmm? So it's like what you call the nose, which sort of goes in there hmm? over the where this. Yeah. yeah. It'll this, make sense once we've yeah, done it. This will be the nose. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I want to have the UPDI program, the programming header, rotate. Um, I want to have this somewhere over here. It can't, can't you go behind the... I d it do doesn't need to, because we can connect from the, uh, the lower side. From the other side, and yeah. And then the, um, the OLED itself will have some, some spacing to the rest of the ah, PC. Okay. Uh, what we can do, we can enlarge these parts so that it's right at the corner of the PCB. Okay. Uh, that it's easy to connect. And the header won't be fitted as standard anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so there's not much here. So we have a little tiny here. Then we have some voltage thingies here. Maybe maybe want to rotate this. Yeah, I want to rotate this. So the little tiny goes right this, uh -huh. like this. And uh, UPDI is, is a direct line now. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, And uh, there goes my little uh, 180K to 6.2K. Rotate, rotate, rotate. Rotate, rotate, rotate. And then okay. I can put them on there. Okay. Yeah, I'm skipping. By the way, I'm skipping the. Uh, this is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, what a mess! <laughs> okay, you see these both connect over here, so I'll put them somewhere together. Yeah, and uh, maybe, more I, line them up. maybe I can line them up so my inner HD HD uh, won't okay. scream at me so much. Um, I'm going to put the little voltage regulator on the bottom side. Okay, not on the on top the reverse, layer. Okay, on, on the bottom layer, so I can have. Um, What's his face? Uh, Larger pads uh, large for heat copper field fields, uh, fields everywhere. Okay. And I um, drop it somewhere over here, and these caps will go on the lower They're side They're also there. Okay. Yeah. Bottom layer. And I'm um, just dropping them. I'm just dropping them there because I have no idea where I'm going to go over there. Okay. But I'll find this out in a minute. Oh no. <laughs> oh no, oh no. Did the world move? I can lock this. Okay. I should lock this because I don't want to move this around. Move okay. this around. So now I have my both, both of my little caps on the, on the bottom side, but I don't want to lay out them right now. I want to start at the top, so I'll disable the bottom layer and um, disable the bottom silk. And uh, now I can draw, the, yeah. do my layout over here. So wire, and I need something. Is this mill? 
Why is millimeters? Mil get this to real mil. mil. Yeah, I know. The what's the, 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 the millimeter? The German is set, sets it to imperial, imperial measurements. I know, but I'm so used to saying rooting width in mils, so this would be something rather like, than millimeters. Yeah, uh, I think with, with twelve we're fine. So why? Uh, let's do the easy parts here. So you're not doing it, getting this to auto root this for us. Auto routing is horrible. Okay. <laughs> no, for really, auto routing is really, really bad. You know, uh, you avoid avoid auto routers at all costs. Maybe with it, with some AI coming up soon. Well, we really we really all hope. Uh, but right now, auto routing is a big mess. Correct. Okay. One big mess. This is really not nice. I think if I turn this around and ground this on top, I can do the. Uh, I can do this way more easier. Okay. So, um, so you're trying to get less of these blue wires to crisscross over each other. Yeah, you see ground and ground is over here. And uh, if I turn this around, vol voltage in is coming from voltage in over here from yeah. from uh, from the nose. Yeah, yeah. And I can go voltage in, and there's probably less. Are we better than... to put in these resistors on the nose? Oh uh, no, I want to keep the nose the nose clean. Okay. <laughs> I was just thinking because that's what sense. that's what they do in the effect we the effect we act as a resistor divider actually yeah. where those pins are. Well, let's see how this works out. Okay. Um, I'm getting. Um, you thinking a good getting... reason to suggest Richard was wrong? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I think I think you're on the right on the right track, and I don't want to keep this nose really tiny because no. this would break. Exactly. Uh, so at least uh, two of these. So this should maybe in the, be in the middle here. And pop two resistors over there. This needs to, the nose needs to go low down, otherwise it won't fit on the board and oh, avoiding yeah, the, uh, right. so the banana needs, push. So it needs, needs to be down there. It needs to go down, you're but right. I'm thinking if the two resistors can go above. Yeah. Well, uh, I have a second side here, so I can do the ground route on the, on the bottom layer. Yeah, yeah. Wire, and this will be a ground fill anyways. So I can do this, move over here, move over, oh. Over there. Oh, come on. Your mouse of hate hates me. Okay. Well, it does the job. That's the ground. Yeah, that's the ground, and we need. Oh, come on. I'll do the um, the thing here now. Um, where's my little. Maybe I should, I should have started on the bottom layer because this is more easy. Um, there are my little. Um, this is my voltage regulator. Mm hmm. So I have V out. This goes there. So I can go here. Mm -hmm. So now I have three volts, three ground. Ground, yep. ground, I can turn on tunnel over here. I want to have ground anyways over here. Yep. And on this side, I can go rotate like that. Yep. And uh, voltage in, I'll do uh, voltage in. Uh, well, both you have two VNs. So they're yeah. both connected to each other. Yeah. Let's do thick lines. Let's do thick lines 14. So do that. Four is not connected, so this is right. So mm -hmm. I was looking here and I thought, did I forget something? I didn't forget something. And I can do something like, oh yeah, this is looking really strange, I know. But I want to have space for wires. I need to get on the, to the other side for the voltage, with the, with, mm -hmm. the, with the plus voltage. So I, I'm doing a big loop here. Okay, fine. And since I need a connection here anyways, So and ground, and here we have ground. Go there. Yep. And you see, this points to the other side already. Yep. So this will be my uh, my voltage regulator. Mm -hmm. I don't thicken up this line because this will ground fill anyways. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll we'll fill this up with with copper, and have some more thermal so thermal mass and mass yep. here. So get ground from here. And what else do I need? Current sensors the other side. Voltage in, V in. All right. Let's go see. Let me see what my what my outline is. Yeah, I have it there. Well, V in goes to oh yeah, it's your power in and also the resistor. Yeah, yeah. And this goes over here. Yeah. 
And now I can do a wire to the other side. Oh, so your other resistor can go down here. Yeah, yeah. You see, I can do the wire. Oh, okay. here. Yes, now I see it. Yeah, yeah. And the horrible ones will be SCL and SCA, so the data lines for the little display will be... Mm -hmm. Well, we'll live with that. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay, current sense is on the other side. Let me check. Let me go back to the upper side. I don't need the bottom layer. <clears throat> Yeah, this this starts to look a bit, a bit, um, a bit horrible here. Let me get rid of these. Ah, very much better. Very much better. These are the parts from the voltage regulator. Why mm -hmm. do I see them? Oh, uh, because I'm selected here. I selected this. This is why I saw them. Mm -hmm. Right. Wire. Not wire. Wire. Wire in wire. Um, w i r e. Yeah. Okay, my little wall scene. So, and these I can do to get to the, through the board right now uh -huh. to the other side. Yeah. So if I go vault in, go down here, and you simply go B for bottom layer, okay. and this automatically sets the wire. Uh, wire. Yeah. This is a in this time this time, V I A. Yes, not this, W I R A. Yeah, yeah. And this way I connect this, and same here, top layer, go over there. I want to connect to the to the trace here, bottom layer, and go there. Uh, come on, connect. Thank you. Okay. Top layer. So we have some three point volt three to get here. This is probably a good thing to go down here. I can grab ground up here to go up here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, can, 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 can connect to this SMT part. Okay. And then I can do 3 volt 3. Yep. Let me get rid of this. And you have 3.3 3 underneath the chip down there. Yeah, indeed. This is where we go. Yep. Bottom connect. Okay. So we need to get 3.3 3 over here. And this is UPDI, so this is a support voltage that doesn't have any current on them. Okay. So we can go for a 10, 10 mil wire. Uh huh. Wire. Go. Oh, maybe I should do this on the top side. <laughs> Could work better. Can you go between the pads like that? Yeah, I can. Okay. This is uh, 10 mil is fine. If you go down to six mil, this will get really tricky. Um, and I prob I for myself won't fit two wires through this. But uh, if if the uh, if you go for a really high resolution um, PCB, you can fit two wires here. Uh, okay. Wires, not, not wires, not wires. <laughs> go for V's and wires. Yeah, yeah, yeah I do. Uh, this is a German problem. <laughs> All right, we have SDA and SCL, so these are my data lines. Oh, look at this, we have space for this. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. They are not critical, so I probably go here, move up there, and go on the on the, on the the lower side of the, of the PCB down here. SDA? Yeah, so start with SDA, why go up. Um, okay, I wanna have some bigger things in here, so 14 is a good, good, good mm -hmm. measure, go. Here, they go down to the bottom side. This is the beauty of um, having uh, through a component, so I can simply go, oh, come on. Your mouse hates me, really, really. And I can just simply go do that. Oh, mm -hmm. Okay, I can't live with this. This is my uh -huh. HDS. This is my uh, uh -huh. inner monk tr t telling me, you know, you can't do this. So, wire, go down there, go. And connect, connect. Come on. Okay. And then I can do the same with SCL. SCL would be. Oh um, wait, I can do. I have to redo this. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> uh, what are you thinking of going there? Um, and and why? I wanna I wanna keep my leave my leave myself some some space to get a second. Um, okay. In here. Now I can do this, because we'll be, all be clear in a second. Oh, I can you, see. You, you guess why. SCL's right? going to be yeah, inside SCL, of this. SCL, we go, we'll go here, go here, go to the bottom, and then I can simply go between those, go down yeah. here, 
got it here. Uh, if you think, oh, is this a, isn't this a long line? No, this isn't a long line. And, SC, and these I squared C communications are pretty slow. So mm -hmm. no worries there. So do we have 3.3 .3 volts somewhere on the top side? We do. Uh, okay. Look here. Let me see top side. Uh, okay, we are a bit stuck here. About three point three. Yeah, well, I'm looking for for the pin over here to display. I want, I want to see how I can get three point three over here easiest. And I think the easiest way will be no. There is no easy way. <laughs> how about? Oh, that's volts input there, isn't it? Where's three point three? Three point three is there, and this is just a dot from the uh, from the chip. And this is all three point three all around yeah, here. So what yeah. about you go on the red route? Oh no, we've got you that bit. No, no. Uh, we, we can, we can. Yeah, we do, we do, we do, do, do a wire over here, and then we have space over here and can get over there. Okay. Yeah, this is good. This is good thinking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go here. Yeah, I want to have the wire pretty much here. The via. Via. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Vias and wires in English don't have this problem. All right, look at this, 3.3, yes. nice one. And this, uh, this is a short one. Mm -hmm. uh, I usually try to avoid vias if, if I can, but um, sometimes you can't get around them. Mm -hmm. And now we have a simple one because this is on top side and we can go down here. Okay, cool it sounds. Yeah, go there, go there. Come on. And go there. And this, my friend, it's a little it's PCB. It's a PCB? Yep. Without any auto router. No. So activate this. Let's have a look. Yeah, this can fly. Okay. I'm happy with this. I'm really happy with this. So from this, then we make a good before? Uh, from this, we make. First, we do. Uh, we do oh, a, we fill a, the a copper board, in. We do a board outline. Uh, this is what first we have to do board outline and go for this. Wire. Come on. Wire in 10. Go. And I'm on the right. Yeah, this is the right thing. Go. Oh, yeah. This looks better. Go down, say, here. Yeah. I can do a little corner. Okay. This is all about mechanical stability right now. Yeah. So I'm, um, I'm a bit worried here that we do this too thin and... Uh, this is a possible breakpoint. We have to check this out. This is something maybe we go for 1.6 mil PCB this time, and uh, yeah, because I'm usually more in the, into the one mil, but I'd suggest the 1.6 mil. Yeah, to give you a bit Just more rigidity, for me mecha mechanical stability. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So not much to do here. Uh, what I want to do, I want to extend these parts because they are too small in my taste. Uh, let's go for. We can do um, rectangular ones, rectangular ones. Thank you. And mm -hmm. then we simply extend these to say 150. So now you have really big parts. Mm -hmm. So this should be easy to connect to the uh, program to the, for, pro for the programming. I want to do some some eye candy here. Just go for top side text. <laughs> I don't know what the default setting is. This is always it's big. way too big. Yeah. If you use a you have to tiny, select tiny, it first. Tiny, oh, yeah. tiny font here, and this I simply just this is just for me G and E. Okay. For us to to remember what's what's on what. Copy. Three volts three. And now you think, oh, these are really big. Uh, letters, no, they aren't. This is really a tiny, tiny little board. Remember this: uh, this whole thing is just like that. Yeah. And this is UPDI. This is just for us when we program it uh, that you can remember what was where. This is yeah. this has as meaning here. And um, yeah, there's not much space left. I can do little tiny tiny text over here just to that we know where what is. Uh, while, we, while we test this well, out. Considering those pins are marked on the main board, they can only plug this in one way round. Yeah, I'm I not know. sure we even need this. Yeah, but I want to have some in, someone, someone on there. Um, let's go 50. This will be really, really tiny. So, uh, barely readable. And we are in the, um, right in the um, 
what's his face in this um, silk screen drawing yeah. anyways but I can see a V copy I can see a ground so G for ground and this will be current sense so C I uh, I yeah, that's a good idea Looks like a looks like just like a line. <laughs> <laughs> These are on the uh, silk screen anyway, so we're fine with that. Well, do we need a ground fill? So when we yeah, yeah, yeah. regulate it, this is coming next. This is coming next. So when I have drawn all this, uh, I can go for um, I select my top top area here now. Go select top area. Thank you. Then you select the copper area. Uh, I thought the regulator was on the other side, so it doesn't the it doesn't matter. I do this on both sides. Okay. So I want to have my copper area. Thank you. And it's connected to ground anyways. Yeah. So okay. And you draw. This is a bit strange. You draw a somewhat rectangular thing here. Yeah. Well, it is. And you simply press return, press return, and uh, if not, you're very likely to do some. You guys going across there. Yeah, but well, and uh, no, this is. I don't, don't, this doesn't matter, as long as uh, the PCB is in there. It's not. It's, it is, it is, look. Oh, it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, uh, this would end up that, like that. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm trying to say it's not. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so curious when you... Can't, if you can't we just make this rectangular? Yeah, you could, but it's no, no, there's no sense in doing that. You simply go for this and uh, press return and uh, after some time... Press return and after some time, uh, press right. What? Oh yeah, this is fine. Okay. Now you think what's happening there? Yeah. This is fine because uh, the ground fill doesn't doesn't include these. There's no direct connection to this. Yeah. But if I go to the other side and do the same, ground. So now I'm on the bottom side. Drawing something very creative here. R click and right click to finish and you see on the bottom side this is all filled now yeah a little chip a little chip on the bottom side let me see it's over here so there's yeah. a nice big copper yeah. line and all this copper down here is all very yeah. very much ground for heat and for heat and for heat yeah so what i can do now i can add wires and i can do this automatically so i select one of these and for one of the fields, mm -hmm. go for add or remove wires. I want to add more wires. Go, yes, 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 blah, blah, blah. And it didn't include a wire over here, bastard. So I'll drop on my one, one in myself. Ding, ding, ding. They are all, they are all ground layers. So, uh, and now if I redraw the copper fill, we will copper area. It should have done that. It didn't. Because reasons. Well, that's, that's too close to the edge to start with. Yeah, I'm not sure why it is that. But you know what? This is fine. Okay. This is fine because we don't need the, a copper fill over here. Mm -hmm. I would always go for a copper fill, by the way, at least for um, all this copper will else end up in the etching solution. So yeah. uh, if you do it this way, you save some copper and be, this is better for the planet, I guess. Okay. I, hope, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least me thinks this. Okay, so we have this. This is the size of the little OLED display. One thing left to do, because we do some so things like this text. Oh, I want to have this text a bit bigger, so 60, and then I can throw it down here. And that's not back to the front side of the side. No, it isn't. I can show you. I saved this now. Yeah, I saved it just first time and then I go for a 3D render and this, uh -huh. this is how the little PCB will look like. And the other sides we can see? Yeah. Oh yeah. There you go my friend. There we go, nice one. I think I want to have these uh, GND 3 PDI on the other side too because we maybe look at this from the other from the other side. So now we can order PCBs. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> Wasn't that hard, right? Yeah, it's fine. This one here? Yeah. Chief of Gerber? Yeah. So we have a Gerber file? Yeah. And now we can upload this. Okay, so here we are on PCB way. So let's order our PCBs. This is actually quite simple. We just go to the main 
start page. Well, we go to the start page. There we are. And we go to PCB instant quote. Okay. And we go to quick order PCB. So I'll leave all this alone this time, I think. Shall we have these in red or black? Of course, you're going to have these in red. Man. To match the other ones. Yeah. Of we, have, we have these in red. <laughs> um, we will change the country and then I'll actually set all the other parameters. So Spain, add the Gerber file. That's it. it. It looks good. Okay, so we upload the Gerber file. It's processed. We can now see our PCB. I've not actually ordered completed PCBs before. Do we have to put any other files on here? The Assembly service down there. Where? Mm -hmm. Or they uh, they ask you to supply a bomb? Oh, they probably ask you. Let's just try to save it to the car. Of course, uh, thirty euros for uh, for the things. Yeah, yeah, doesn't feel ad file, and it doesn't cost us anything. Why? <laughs> uh, do I need to? So that's the that's the PCBs. Multi-load display, blah blah blah. Add files. Uh, what did I choose? The first one was um, the bomb. Centroid file, I'll pick and place. Hundred percent success. Success. Submit. Submit order now. Mm -hmm. Go. File uploading. Right, so we've now uploaded the Gerber file, the bill of materials, mm -hmm. and the pick and place file. Mm -hmm. And now, basically, it has given us the assembly costs, but the total will say zero at the moment because they need to check the order over. They they review the order. Mm, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then when they say everything's okay, then they will actually give you the price fine okay yeah because they they can't know right now what's on the uh, yeah what's on the on the bill of materials yeah 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 so they now need to review mm -hmm. that before we can proceed okay so that's as far as we can go at the moment with yeah. the order yeah. everything is there guys ready to assemble you can see the cost of assembling these it was six dollars per item and it was one dollar per item for the pcbs yeah and since we're lazy with we're adding up for some dollars to do the assembly by pcb ways yeah yeah Okay, so that's how you actually add the Gerber files and how you order the PCBs ready assembled. We can't go any much further with this one today, so that's ready for next time. Hope you enjoyed that. Another look around how to actually get these things made, and we'll see you all soon. Bye, guys. Ciao for now.